Wizards of the Coast has introduced the new welcome booster, and it is indeed a welcome change to the status quo. But the question is, what is it? And more importantly, what's inside the booster pack? <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. I welcome you to this welcoming video. Let's see how many times I can say welcome. So, what do we have here? We have the Welcome Booster. This is a brand new product from Wizards of the Coast. This is a specific niche product. This is not something you're going to buy in booster boxes, anything like that. This is actually a replacement product. So the question becomes, what is it replacing? Well, if you're not familiar with how Wizards of the Coast did things up until now, there were events known as open houses that kind of got collapsed into pre-releases but originally how it worked was when a set was slated to come out a week before the release you would have a pre-release but a week before that you would have an open house and the open house is it's a similar concept that they do with like in real estate right where it's like come in you know have a look feel out the environment see if this is something you want to be a part of so the idea behind the open house was you come in to play magic the gathering you will be given a free magic deck an entire magic deck for free and a promo card as well. Now, the intro decks that they gave out were 60 card decks. They came in cute little uh, cardboard boxes with the Planeswalkers printed on them just to give a character on the front of them. The Planeswalkers weren't included in the deck and overall it didn't really matter that much which deck you picked. Like, if you pick a deck in a, a particular color, you're going to get your deck half that color. It's a, it was an interesting way they chose to do things where you could pick one of the five colors, you would get two essentially mini 30 card decks that you shuffle together to create your 60 card deck. So if you wanted to, you could even simplify the process where you weren't required to start with two colors. You could literally just take one 30 card deck or if, for example, you just got one of these decks but weren't able to be a part of the open house, you and someone who's teaching you could each take one of the little 30 card decks and play them against each other. They were all roughly equally balanced, whether as 30 card decks or 60 card decks. So if you selected the black deck box with Lilian on it, you would get a 30 card black deck and a 30 card deck of any of the other four colors randomly determined. And I liked that. I thought it was cool that you could somewhat control, like pick what color you're most interested in. And when it comes to new people, you don't want to put them on the spot too much. Too much. You don't want to make them make, they like, which color do you want to pick? And it's like, oh, I don't want to pick the wrong color. So you're basically like, you know what, man, this is, this is totally chill. Either pick a color that you like just based on the actual color itself, knowing nothing about the game. Or if you want, I can give you a rundown of like, Black's corruption magic, green's nature magic, so on, right? Well, like people at different levels because I'm a guy who ran multiple open houses. I was familiar with the experience. So some people would pick based on color. Some people just didn't care and were like, oh, I'm happy with whatever. So the intro decks were both good and bad. They were great for a beginner in terms of being really, really simplified. They were also great in that Wizards of the Coast had addressed the problem where if you make something too attractive and too good, then other people that it's not intended for will come in because it's free and snag it up. People will go to stores and pose as being new or bring in people who have nothing to do with Magic Gathering but pretend to be new or interested to get these decks, right? And then they don't end up in the hands of beginners. Now, this is definitely a real thing. I've witnessed it happen. Understand that while I'm not associated with any store now, I spent a long time assisting at a game store, including promo distribution. There was a time when Wizards of the Coast had this promotion dealing with Xbox and PlayStation and things like that, and ma a Magic game. A Magic game was released, and they, they had these codes that you could get in the game that you could take to the store to redeem for physical cards kind of the opposite of how they used to do things. They used to use their digital games to try and, try and drive people to physical stuff. Now you can see the opposite, where they're not trying to get people to quit playing Paper Magic, but they are trying to use Paper Magic as a vector to grow their online presence. But in this past scenario, it was people who would redeem this code, You're, you print the code out, and you take it into a game store, and they will give you a promo. But there was no database to keep track of these codes, so what happened was unscrupulous individuals who were greedy printed out multiple copies of this code page 
and went to every LGS they could. There were people who lived in Toronto, and if you don't know, like in Canada, we have a population of roughly about 25 million people. Toronto has about 10% of all the people in our entire country. There's millions and millions of people in Toronto, and thus there are a lot of magic game shops. There are people who went around to every game shop in the area trying to snag up a copy of the promo scavenging news because it was, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, a 15 to $20 card. So you had people going all around Toronto and then traveling all the way to the game store that I was at, which is an hour and a half drive from Toronto. We're talking like hundreds of kilometers away, right? So people would travel that far just to get these cards when they were meant for people who were playing this game, who were getting into Magic, because the software was pretty basic as well. Like, this was meant to be a beginner thing. So there are definitely people who will take advantage of this greedily, right? So by having the beginner decks of no interest to anybody outside a beginner, these decks were so weak. They were full of such bland, non-powerful cards that even the rares in the decks, the rares in the decks were designed for those decks, and they were designed to be exciting to a noob, but not strong enough to impact standard, even though they were standard legal. I would say the strongest out of all of them would maybe be the aggressive mammoth, and that's six mana for an 8-8 eight eight that gives all your guys trample. Like, it's not super powerful. You know, uh, like you may not even know the card from me mentioning it, and it's been in standard for the last two or three years. That's how irrelevant the card is. I've only seen one person other than myself play it on Arena ever. So it's not like, and that's the best of them, right? So they succeeded in making decks that weren't appealing to anybody outside the basic beginner of Magic. However, the problem there is that those decks aren't appealing to anybody outside the basic beginner of Magic. So unless you fall into the exact demographic of two brand new people happen to walk in off the street, both get into the open house, are friends who can get together and play, like the odds of that are so low. According to Wizards' own statistics, you have a scenario where only Four, four to five percent of people who came to the open houses were like brand new, just stumbled into the store learning about magic from some extra, like, we heard about the open house, we're here for it. 80 something percent, like it's something like 81 percent of all magic players, according to Wizards own internal data, and I got this through the w, WPN website, which is the information they provide to retailers. So. 81% of their customer base, the engaged customer base, and those are people who who just didn't try it once and throw it aside, the people like us who are down for magic, you know what I mean? We want to play, we want to own the cards, we want to talk about it, we want to watch videos. Engaged, although actually, I'm a step beyond engaged. I'm what they call a super fan, right? I'm not going anywhere. I'll yell at them, saying, fix the thing, but I'm sticking around. So they're just looking at people who will play regularly that's that that level just people who play magic on occasion and are engaged with the game which really just means you've played magic a couple times in the last six months 81 percent of the player base comes from learning from a friend or family introducing you to the game so the open house events were fairly useless because most people who are being introduced to the game are being introduced to people by people who already have a ton of magic cards so can provide them with a bunch of low level garbage to begin with. So they already have access to garbage cards. So that defeats the open house deck because you bring an open house deck and you're going to play with your friend. And he's like, I don't, I don't want to play against your deck. It's garbage. I'm just going to win all the time. And I don't want to build a deck that is as trashy as an open house deck. I just want to play magic and have fun. So essentially any open house deck player is going to immediately have to step up their game. Their, their whole deck is obsolete from the get go. The majority of players don't learn from it. The open house just it wasn't serving its purpose. So Wizard stepped back and said, okay, what do we do to address this? Let's change it up. Now, they did the open house in addition to the promo where they'd give you a deck and a promo and they'd give the person who brought you a promo. And most of the time coming to an open house, it was somebody who already was in the game. So they already have you. They don't need you to come to the open house. They can do it through whatever vector. So now instead, what they're doing is a program that's ongoing. So instead of having one narrow weekend where you have the open house, which in its defense makes sense. The open house weekend made sense because it's right before the pre-release and pre-release is an amazing experience for everybody, including beginners. It's a great, like, we're all on the same page. Oh, this heat wave is getting to me, my friends. I'm sure you can see me melting here. But um, anyways, the pre-release is a great experience. You can go straight from your 
like open house experience where you're like, okay, I've got this deck, but I want more magic cards. Where do I go next? And it's like, well, you can buy a Planeswalker deck if you want, but if you come back next week, we've got a pre-release going on where everybody's on the same page. You all just get, you're all gonna get the same amount of product. You just open the booster packs and play with what you got. It's not super skill intensive. The deck building aspect of it is super simple. You just pick a couple colors and mash the cards together and you're good to go. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, some people are gonna feel like, okay, like this is overwhelming, but overall pre-release is a pretty decent experience for people to get in on the ground floor with. So them trying to lead open house into pre-release on paper seemed like a great idea to me. I praised it, but we can see, and I've seen from running open houses myself, that no, it doesn't actually do that much to bolster the player base. And so they've come along and changed it to welcome boosters, okay? So now we're gonna open the contents and take a look at this. Every single welcome booster is identical. So the cards that I'm showing you right now are the cards that every person who starts playing gets. And this is much better than just getting a pile of junk commons and uncommons and one rare that's unplayable. So we're gonna crack into it now and take a look, my friends. So the first, oh, Funky, look at that. Okay, so they've got, it says, welcome to the world of magic. Here are some cards to help get you started. I like that. And then it says, Friday, night, Friday nights are for magic, inviting you out to the FNM. So we start out and right away you get a foil land. Look at that plane. Doesn't that look beautiful? Isn't that gorgeous? That looks good. That looks pretty nice. Hopefully it's not focusing too much on my face. There we go. Let the cards be my face. So you get a foil planes. Oh, look at that, they, they huh. join the magic community. So you've got a little insert that says, talk with your local store about your first purchase. There's a product to get you started in any style of play. Oh, that's good as well, honestly. Let me let me stop stop for a moment and address this. In the WPN information, they state to, to everybody, look, here's why we're discon discontinuing in the intro deck and figure out what the players are actually like, the people they know are playing and give them that stuff. So basically, if they're playing I'm so sweaty. If they're playing a commander deck, like if, if everybody's playing commander, sell them commander decks. If they play standard, sell them a challenger deck. Hopefully one that doesn't have banned cards. Good job on that one, Wizards. So this is a little insert. I like that. Then you've got, again, look, another foil. You get a foil igneous cur. This is that uh, the one that taps to do a damage to any target and is two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Pretty straightforward. Pretty cool looking. Seems like a good choice. I shall hide behind it. And then we've got, hey, look at that. You get a rare right off the bat. A Demon of Loathing from Theros. Seven mana, five mana, no, seven mana, sorry. For a seven, seven flying trampler. When it deals combat damage to a player, that player sacks a creature. This feels like a great beginner rare, doesn't it? Like it feels so, hello, noobs. Do you like ridiculousness? Because we've got some for you. Like this isn't too powerful, but it isn't too weak as well. It's a nice include. All right. And then we've got Commander Sphere. Look at that. Look at that, they actually include a specific commander card. Three to put out, tap, add one man of any color to your commander's identity, color identity. I should add one man of any color in your color's commander identity and sacrifice it to draw a card. It harmonizes with the essence of its master. That's a smart include. Anybody playing commander is gonna be able to use that straight off the get-go, very cool. Then we've got, what is this? Oh, just a little Teferi art insert? That looks great. That the night, that's a nice little extra touch. Is there anything on the other side? Oh, meet Teferi, cool. Meet Teferi, let's see what it says here. The Time Mage Teferi has been through a lot in his 1200 years. He's made choices good and bad, but he's always made sure to learn from his decisions and he's never forgotten his sense of humor. Recently repowered, he's ready to go out and improve the multiverse. Can I be real? That's some, that's kind of like weak flavor, honestly. They, they, they learn more about Teferi at MTG Story, but they, I don't know, man, they don't, um, that's really bare bones. Oh, dude, love mythic rare. Look at that, you get a Garouk. They're giving you a Garouk Planeswalker. You get a mythic rare Planeswalker. Five mana for a three, uh, three loyalty Planeswalker. Plus one, create a three, three green beast creature. Minus three, draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Minus six, create a green, a six, six green worm creature token for each land you control. Dude, that's awesome. What an awesome include. Everybody who gets a pack gets one of these. That's awesome. All right, then we've got Niv Mizzet. Oh, a big fat legendary dragon. Yeah, man, Niv Mizzet feels great. This is Niv Mizzet Perrin. He's got flying. Uh, he can't be countered. 
Whenever you draw a card, he deals one damage to any target, and whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery, you draw a card. Wow, not too shabby. Not too shabby at all, man. Hey, Underworld Dreams, cool. That's a cool uncommon to include. That's a funky card. These cards are doing a half decent job of distributing the flavor as well. Not too shabby. Every time they draw a card, they take a damage, three black to put out. All right. Then we've got, what the heck is this? Archetype of Imagination. Uh, two blue and four for a three, two. Creatures you control are flying. Creatures your opponent control lose flying and can't have or gain flying. Oh yeah. That's a good feeling for a beginner as well. I can fly over with all my guys and you can't block me because you don't have flyers. Good choice. Good choice. Nice range here. Oh, and more foils? What? This thing's loaded with foils and rares. That's awesome. Garuk's Gorehorn. So it's five mana for a 7-3 vanilla. So beefy, though. It's so beefy, man. It's like a Yargle at common. It certainly takes after its master. Big and brutish, and you can smell it from a mile away. Liliana Vest, why you gotta be talking smack about my boy Garrick, huh? And then what do we got after that? Oh, cool. Oh, it's a storybook, like, special masterpiece. Not masterpiece. Um, What are they called? Showcase. Showcase storybook frame. Although, admittedly, I always thought that this artwork looks dumb. It like her, This is her hair flowing up here, but it doesn't look like her hair, so it just makes it look like she's a weird, fat, bald, fairy godmother. <laughs> and you're like, what the hell? <laughs> Where have you been? You need to get on the treadmill. And then we've got... Oh! Look at that. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it actually doesn't matter. By the time this video goes up, I'll have already put this in. This is an arena code. I forgot this was in here. This is an arena code, and it gets you a Critter Corp deck. So you literally get an arena deck from this as well. So in the pack, they're giving you a deck you can play on arena, as well as, what's the breakdown here? What's the breakdown? We get one common, one foil, one uncommon, two uncommons, one rare, one mythic. Actually, you know what? The easiest way is to probably just group them together rather than count out like a, like a weirdo. Whatever, man. I got time. I got time. Just cooking here with the, with the air conditioning off. Just praying for the end of my existence. All right, here we go. So we got three foils. You get a mythic rare. You get one, two, you get two rares, two uncommons, a funky common. Nope. Two uncommons, sorry. Two funky uncommons. Two funky commons. All right, never mind. The heat's, the heat's scrambling my brain. All right, my friends. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This channel's fan-funded, so if you like what I do, support the channel on Patreon. It makes a big difference, and considering that I'm losing patrons at this point because of, of the uncertainty in the world, it would definitely be beneficial for me. So, goodbye for now, my friends. Goodbye.